Well, we're going to talk about social bookmarking here, and there are probably three tools that I mentioned that you could use for social bookmarking. One of the tools is called Digo. Well, let's take a look at what Digo is and why you might want to use it. We're going to start going to the website called Digo. That's D-I-I-G-O, digo.com, and we're going to create an account. Now, rather than just start on this Get Started Now, there's a little button that says Educator. It's like, hey, I always like it when I can find that. So I'm going to click the Educator button. And it says, if you're an educator, please log in first, then apply for your educator upgrade. Well, then I guess I better go log in first. So um, up here at the top, I can click Join Digo, or if I go back, I can click Get Started Now. Now, to get started now, it's going to ask me some, for some information. Uh, it's going to want to know a username. So I'm going to see if mine is uh, Andrew M. Mann. And it says it's available. So I'll put in my real name and my email. And then... Oh, it says it's already been in use, so I guess I already have one. So let's try uh, that at gmail.com. And then down here where it says uh, choose a password, so I will type in a password, and you can decide it just needs to have that um, the uh, six characters. But it says we can also join via my Facebook account, my Google account, other ways. I can come on down here. Now, this little thing here that's called a, a CAPTCHA, this is so that some um, little auto program on the web doesn't create all these fake accounts and create spam. So sometimes you don't get it right. Let's see if I can today. N-G-S-C-U-R-E. Let's see if that looks right. If it doesn't, it'll give you G again. Looks like maybe I'm successful today. Now, one of the keys to using a program like Digo or Delicious or um, Pearl Trees is to install a button that you put in your browser, and that button makes um, it very easy for you to, um, to use it. It says, great, it says activate my account, and now I need to go in to that and be able to activate my account. Now, once my, my account's been activated, and then I can go ahead and move on. So you want to open up your email, and here in my email I have something from Digo. It says activate your Digo account. Click on it, it gives me a little message, and it has a hyperlink. I can click on this hyperlink, and then voila, my Digo account has now been activated. It actually takes me back to my Digo account so that I can go into my, my next steps in the process. Okay, once we've activated it, we'll be taken to this screen. It says, this is the next place. We need to install either the Digolet, which is called a bookmarklet, or we need to install a toolbar. Let's first show you how you would install the Digolet. Now, underneath my address bar, I have this other bar showing. Now, up under the view, under the word toolbars, this is called my bookmarks bar. On sometimes, this is not turned on. If it's not turned on, I recommend you turn it on by putting a check mark in front of it. That's under View, Toolbars, Bookmark, Bookmarks Bar. Now, let me show you if you were using Internet Explorer. I'll open that up. It looks almost the same. Under a View is a view that says View, Toolbars, and this one is called the Favorites Bar. The Favorites is what they call it in Internet Explorer. The uh, bookmark bar is what they call it in Firefox. What that gives you is that gives you a bar that comes up across the top right here that you can put in some of your most useful and visited websites. So now I'm back in to, um, into Firefox. And I'm going to just take this, drag this Digolet up to my bookmark bar, that, that little word, click, hold, drag it up here just like this, I'll see a little insert button, and I'm going to click on it, and now I have something that looks like a little dashed line with the word Digolet. If I do want to install the, the 
feature rich Digo toolbar, I can click here and go through the process. In Internet Explorer, it's done a little bit differently. You can't just drag the DigoLet toolbar up into the, um, the, your favorites. Um, it actually has to be added to your favorites. Now, normally it'll come up when you're in Internet Explorer, but if for some reason this um, alternative install screen does not come up, you can go up to Tools. So we're going to do that here. So just click on the button that says Tools when you're logged into Digo. It's up next to where it says Go Premium. And when you, when you click on Tools, it's going to bring you up to um, some options for doing some installs. And one of the options says DigoLet, Simple Bookmarklet, other tools. And we're going to go ahead and click the DigoLet button. And when we click the DigoLet, it will bring me in here. And it says for Internet Explorer, just click this, right click on it, and say Add to Favorites. Now when I click Add to Favorites, it says you're adding to a Favorites. This may not be safe or you want to continue. I say yes. It says, where would you like to put this? It says, Digolet in my favorites. Now, I find that instead of putting it in my favorites, I navigate down and say, put it in my favorites bar, because then it's more convenient. And I click Add, and now you'll see it's right up here in my favorites bar. Now, that's all there is to get started. Let's go ahead and find out how do I use Digo and Digolet. Well, the idea is that when I go to save things now, when I go to save a website, instead of saving it to my favorites or saving it to my bookmarks, it now saves it to the cloud, to an online website called Digo, and I can go back there at any time and be able to access it. Let's find out how that works. To start with, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to a website that we looked at the other day, UEN.org, UtahEducationNetwork.org. And now I'm on this website. I'm still in Internet Explorer. Um, I'll say, well, you know, I remember that under the Student Center, which was the third link down on the left, and over here there were these student interactives. I want to not lose those. So I'm going to click this K2 Student Interactives and say, I'd like to be able to remember this site right here. Boy, this would be so great to be able to come back to it any time from any machine in the world. So I'm going to click the little DigoLet button and it pops up a screen and uh, the screen says what would I like to do it's it's actually not a full screen let me do that again because it came up very small it was even hard to see so when I click it a little bar shows up here on the top and it says what would I like to do highlight it bookmark it add a sticky note share it Digo go to my Digo or get premium and I'm gonna say you know I want to bookmark it so when I bookmark it, a, a small little screen pops up that says, ah, this is the, the URL, this is the title, I can edit that if I want. Do I want to make it private, unread, upload, tweet it? I'm going to just leave it normal. And then I always like to write a short description. Um, collection of interactive um, activities. And then down here I'm going to put some keywords that I want to use to know. Now, the nice thing is they give me some suggestions, and if I like their suggestions, I just click on them. And you'll notice it puts a space between them. It doesn't use commas. These tags are sort of like my index for finding things. Now, I like to use the tag Utah, one that I just decided. Maybe I'll remember it as Utah, and maybe I'll use one called 21 Things, because this is something that I learned in 21 Things. And when I think about 21 Things, I might be able to remember this. So you can add any one that you'd like, just put a space between them. You'll notice that 21 things, I did not put a space between 21 and things, um, and it treats that as a single word. If I wanted 21 things to be 21 space things, I can put that in quotes. Usually I just smush them together. I'm also a big fan of keeping everything lowercase here. Now I'm going to go ahead and say save my bookmarks. Now. Let's see how we can access this later when I want to be able to find them. So let's say I'm out at some other website. How about if I'm out at, at my homepage, Google? And I said, you know, 
I'm, I wish I could remember. Oh, there was some website that was interactive that I, I learned about in 21 things. And oh, gosh, Utah. I, man, I just remember it. Well, I can come up here and click on my Degolet button. And it says, oh, what would you like to do? Would you like to highlight, bookmark, sticky note, share, or go to your Dego library? That's what I want to do. And when I click this, it says, here's your library. It opens up, and all of the sites that I have collected are there. And I can find the one I want and click on it and go there. Now, as your list starts to grow, you won't be able to find it because there's only one there. So what I would do is I would say, you know, I'm looking for something that I used to tag 21 things in it. And I'll hit enter and it will find all my sites that I tagged with the word 21 things. Let me just give you an example. I've just logged into um, another account. This is one that I use more often that has a few more sites in it. Um, and I'm going to say I'm looking for things that I might have tagged with the word YouTube. You know, I, this is my library here, and I'll type YouTube. So now I'm coming down here, and I'm finding all of these sites that are with YouTube. And the wonderful thing is I can even further refine it and say, you know, it was, I was something around YouTube and um, I can tutorials or a YouTube and uh, other ones. So I can even further refine it. And I can look here and say, oh, here's one on YouTube downloaders, and here's, you know, Twitter links and YouTube links and Muskegon Heights and, you know, the uh, MAISD, you know, sample YouTube channel. So I can easily be able to get down here and find mine just by using the tags. Now let's look again at what the assignment is. The assignment is that you need to load, create an account in Digo or Delicious. Um, you need to be able to add the little button up here into the toolbar. I use the Degolet button. I could have added the whole toolbar. And then you need to um, add some sites. So let's once again look at what the assignment is. You need to create your own Dego page. You need to add a minimum of five sites that you would bookmark with at least three tags per bookmark. And then you're supposed to do a post and share your, your link and the link to your Digo account. So, so let's just take a look at how we might do that. So here I have uh, this address. So let's say that I always want to be able to remember my blog address, even when I'm out in some other location. So I've called my blog up here. I'm going to go ahead and click the Digo let button. I'm going to roll over to where it says bookmark. I'm going to give it a name. If I don't like the title, I could say a 21 things blog. I can describe it, you know, my 21 things blog. I can add some keywords, 21 things blog. Now I have to have a minimum of three tags. That was one of the... Um, one of the requirements, so, you know, homework, <laughs> um, because this is Whitehall, I'll type Whitehall schools, um, maybe I even used my last name, and I misspelled homework, you can watch that, um, and I'll put a tag of H-A-V-E-R, sometimes I'll use a tag that's my last name, so I put my 21 things blog, um, Occasionally, this is a little trick that I do, I'll make it private. Now that's if I'm saving something that I want nobody else to see. Um, when I do that, every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll use the technique, I'll make it private, and then I'll write that my user name was, you know, and I'll put my username in here, and then I'll put, I usually don't write my password, but I might, might write myself a reminder. You know, it's my short easy password that I like to use, and I know what that one would be. Now, when I do that and I make it private, I have to be logged into Digo, to, actually with the username and password for me to be able to ever see this. But if I just leave it like this, my 21 things user blog, and this is what you need to do so that I can see that there, I'm going to not make it private. I'm going to go ahead and save it, and then 
I'll go back into my library. Let's go to my library so I can show you. And here it is right at the top of the list of my library. My 21 Things blog with, with four different, five different tags in here. And to meet the assignment, I'm going to copy this address up here for my Digo. So I'll copy this. I'll also take a screenshot of this and paste in this screenshot to show that um, I was able to get Digo up and running. And ideally, what I'd like to do is have the screenshot be able to show that you have five different sites, a minimum of uh, five sites in here so that I know you met that requirement. Actually, the assignment does not say to take a screenshot of your Digo page, but um, I think I, you know, I think it would be helpful to show me that you got it. So again, you can use Digo, you can use Delicious. Delicious has changed in the last, um, the last year, so some of our tutorials may be a little different than what it looks like now, but um, you'll find it very similar where you add a, a button up on the top and you add keywords or tags as you file things away. So that's a little introduction to these two tools. They do a lot more. Um, matter of fact, if you, you go into the um, teacher's mode and, and upgrade to a free teacher's account, you can even put students underneath your Digo account and then have students share and say things to a classroom website. So there's lots of uh, lots of nice things about Digo. Um, Delicious doesn't quite do some of those things. That's why a lot of teachers will go towards Digo. But um, give it a go. I think you'll you'll find you wondered how you ever lived without it. And as a couple people said earlier, um, when your computer gets reimaged, you won't, won't lose all your bookmarks. Your bookmarks are now available to you on any computer that you can get on the internet. You'll just go to digo.com slash user slash and then put in your username. And uh, another thing is that you're using keywords to help you organize your sites. So um, you, don't have to, you don't have to say, okay, now where did I put that? You can, and you can use any keywords or tags that make sense to you. So if you want to say math or you want to say that it's uh, um, something you learned in 21 things and remember, oh, I remember learning that in 21 things. Use that as a tag. So, so or a conference you attended. Um, so it's wonderful. It's a, I think you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. So. Good